channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. We will start. Now we are going to solve a question from simplification concept. There are many questions that has been asked in TCS and QT depending upon the simplification concept. So whenever we are going to solve the question of this model, we should always apply something called board mass rule. Board mass rule. Then only you will get accurate answer. So board mass rule is basically first we should uh, solve brackets and then off and then division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. So first priority should be given always for the braces that you have in your question. That means this particular brackets that we had. Here is one bracket and here is one more. So first I need to solve this small bracket and then I should open this large bracket. So let us try to solve what is there in the small bracket. So here we have mixed fraction format. So you should never consider in the form of a mixed fraction. First you need to simplify it in terms of a normal fraction. So how do we write 2, 2 by 5 in terms of a normal fraction? So that is 5 into 2 plus 2. 5 into 2 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12 divided by 5. That means this particular term, I can write it as 12 divided by 5 minus 3 by 10 divided by 1 by 3. So if I want to solve this particular small bracket, again, I need to follow board mass rule itself. First division should be done, then subtraction should be considered here. So first I need to substitute this particular division. So what will happen? 12 divided by 5 minus 3 by 10. If I solve this division, when 1 by 3 comes to the top, it will become 3 by 1, which is nothing but 12 divided by 5 minus 9 by 10. 9 by 10. So let me just take the LCM here, which is 10. So 24 minus 9. 24 minus 9, which is 15 divided by 10. 3 by 2. I'll just reduce it, which is 3 by 2. That means this particular bracket entire value is nothing but 3 by 2. 3 by 2. This entire value we solved. Now I need to open this major bracket now. So that means I need to simplify this particular values here. So uh, let us take this expression separately here. 7, 1 by 3. This is again in form of a mixed fraction. So let's write it as a normal fraction, which is 22 divided by 3. 7 into 3, 21. 21 plus 1, 22. Minus 2, 1 by 12, which is 25 divided by 12 into 6 divided by 25 divided by 1 by 4 of 3 by 2. Just now we have solved this brackets, which is 3 by 2. Now, first priority should be given for of and then division and then multiplication and then subtraction should be followed. So 22 divided by 3 minus 25 divided by 12 into 6 by 25 divided by 1 by 4 of means into of is nothing but into 3 by 2. So if I solve this, this is not going to get cancelled, but let me just write it as a normal term. So 22 divided by 3 minus 25 divided by 12 into 6 by 25 divided by 3 by 8. Now let me substitute this division first. So 22 divided by 3 minus 25 divided by 12 into 6 by 25. Division comes to the top, it will become like 8 by 3. 3 by 8 comes to the top, it will become 8 by 3. Now let me try to cancel if I can cancel anything here. So 25, 25 will be eliminated. 6 1s and 6 2s, uh, 2 1s and 2 4s. So what is left over? 22 divided by 3 minus 4 by 3, which is nothing but if I take the LCM as 3, 18 divided by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. That means this entire bracket's value is nothing but 6. Now, 1 by 18 into 6 is going to give us the answer. 1 by 18 into 6 is how much? 1 by 3. So the value of this entire expression, if we simplify, the value is nothing but 1 by 3. Option D. So you should always follow board mass rule itself when you are going to solve the topic of simplifications. And Always, whenever you had mixed fraction, always convert it in terms of normal fraction and then consider. So first give priority for brackets, then of, then multiply, division, multiplication, addition, and then only perform subtraction. So you will get the exact answer. So the answer for this question is option D.
here is a question from the concept of elementary statistics which is one of the most asked topics in tcs nqt exam as per the previous year analysis there are four to five questions also asked in some slots only on the topic of elementary statistics now we will be solving a question from the concept so let's see the question four distributions at the jobs peep insta fresh seven offline prepare prepare 9i are given below at the jobs is 4213356987 peep insta 4567891011 13 fresh seven 5645758152 offline prepare 9i 2661101089 what is the mean of the two modes in the only bimodal distribution among the above so what is the mean of the two modes in only bimodal distribution what is meaning of bimodal distribution firstly you should understand so basically what is a mode among the given observations which observation appear more frequently that is called as a mode now for example if i take the other jobs which observation is appearing more frequently see three is appearing more frequently so uh, remaining all are just uh, one time but three is two times that means mode of this particular data will be three similarly if i look at this one what is mode of this data 4567891011 uh, 12 13 that means there is no mode for this data it's not zero that's no mode there is no observation that is appearing more frequently all observations are equally appeared so there is no mode for this data now what about this one uh, is there any mode for this data yes if you observe among all the numbers here phi is appearing more frequently that means mode for this is phi now if we look over the last one 6 is appearing two times and 10 is also appearing two times remaining no that means there are two modes here this is nothing but bimodal bimodal means there are two modes 6 is one mode and 10 is one mode here so this is called as a bimodal other than one mode will be having two modes here if you observe there is only one mode and here there is no mode at all but here there are two modes so this is called a bimodal distribution having two modes now what are those two modes only bimodal distribution is only this one here so what are those two modes 6 and 10 bimodal distribution here is only this one and those modes are 6 and 10 now your question is what is mean of this two modes what is mean mean is nothing but sum of the observations divided by number of the observations that means we needs to add them 6 plus 10 divided by how many number are there two numbers so you needs to divide with 2 so 16 divided by 2 so what is the answer 8 option d so bimodal is nothing but whenever you have more than one mode nothing but the two modes is called as a bimodal so here is there is only bimodal distribution is only for this which is 6 and 10 so we needs to identify the mean for this particular numbers so 6 plus 10 divided by 2 answer will be option d here is one more question from the concept of elementary statistics what is the median time for the period 1st february to 20th september of a leap year so we should identify what is the median time period of this particular dates which they gave here so we are not going to do the regular method for this particular problem so we can't arrange them in terms of ascending order like we do for median and we are not going to do n plus 1 divided by 2 term or for even no we can't apply all those methods here why because this is a time period that they gave us and this is a continuous time period so how do we do this kind of question this is one good model that appeared in nqt so let's see how to solve so generally what is a median median is nothing but central tendency median is called as a central tendency now we need to identify what is the center tendency for this dates which they gave that means from 1st february to 20th september there are a lot of dates in that which is the center that is our median here so how do i get the center if i do total divided by 2 total number of days divided by 2 that will give me exactly where is the center date 
so let us identify first the total number of days so first it starts from february 1st that too it's a leap year leap year means february 29 days will be there and then march after february march 31 days then april 30 days let us write until 28th september like this so may it will be 31 days june 30 july 31 august 31 and september 20 only we are supposed to consider in september because it is until september 20 so let us identify what are the total number of days total number of days will be just add them you can even use your on screen calculator so 29 plus 30 1 plus 30 plus 31 plus 30 plus 31 plus 31 plus 20 it is going to give us 233 days now i want median of this dates so what will be the median 233 divided by 2 exactly the center between this so 233 divided by 2 is nothing but 116.5 days that means 116 days is completed and the half day is completed 0.5 is nothing but half day 116 days is completed and half day is completed then we will get the exact median so let us identify when 116 days and half day will be done from the 1st of february so let us try to count them we want 116 days first and then we will calculate the half day so 116 days so for example if i add 29 plus 31 i'll get 60 i want 116 so let me keep on adding so now if i add here until here 60 plus 30 means i'll get 90 so total this entire thing is just going to give me 90 days are done up to here now if i add 90 plus 31 that is going to cross if i add 90 31 it will become 121 days which is going to cross 116 days so let me stop here until this part 90 days is completed now 116 and 90 what is the difference can i say 116 as 90 plus 26 days so 90 days is completed up to here that means april completed now 26 days of may we want so 26 days of may we want means 26th may will be the day yes 26th may so 116 days are completed by 26th may so 26th may is also done now we want half more day so after 26th may what is the next day it will be 27th in 27th half day is completed in 27th half day is completed and that will give us exactly where is the median what is exactly half day that means 12 noon so 27th 12 noon is the exact answer that means the center of all of this or the median time period for this is 12th 12 noon of 27th may most of the students will go with option c but that's completely wrong midnight between 26 and 27 no 20s by 26 One one sixteen days is completed, so twenty six is also completed, and then half day is supposed to be done. So from twenty seventh half day, twenty seventh half day means exactly twelve noon. Noon is nothing but afternoon, right? PM twelve PM means exactly half day is completed. So what is the answer for this question? Option A. Now we are going to solve a question from data interpretation concept. when you get the questions from data interpretation concept there are various ways of asking the question one the question will be upon tabular columns or pie chart or bar graph or the line graph now we are going to solve a question depending upon the bar graph which was quite seen more in nqt exam so here is the question let's solve it a rural library created lending facility for only 100 books and kept the lending desk open only on mondays which were the days on which it is also took stock of the books the position of number of books lent and returned on the first three mondays m1 m2 and m3 of operation in the lending desk is presented through a bar graph below how many of these 100 books remained outside the library after the stock checking on the third monday so the library is going to give the books or take the books only on mondays and there are total 100 books and this is the process that happened in the first monday second monday and third monday so once after completion of the entire 
thing now we need to identify how many books are left over in the library after the third monday so let us check how to identify so total 100 books are there now if i look on first monday l stands for lending here length the length the books and that was represented in blue color which is here so 80 books are lent out of this 100 books 80 books are lent that means how many books will be still left over in the library 20 books will be left over in the library 20 books will be left over these are lent lent books that means the library gave 80 books for the customers now 20 books are left over after the first monday now first monday is done now second monday the library will accept to return the books and again it will lend the books for the customers now how many books the library took back returned books r stands for return so r how many books it returned 50 books the customers returned so already 20 books are left over in the library now so 50 books will be added because these books are returned so total 70 books should be there 70 books should be right now in the stack now after this second monday the library is going to lend 60 books again that means out of the 70 books 60 books are again given for the customers 60 books are again given for the customers so total 70 books 60 books are given for the customers that means right now how many books will be left over in the library only 10 books will be left over 70 minus 60 so 10 books are left over after second monday only 10 books are left over now let us see what happened on the third monday so how many books are returned here 80 books are returned here already 10 are available in the library now 18 books are returned that means this 80 will be added for this that means in total 90 books should be there but still the library gave 40 books for the customers that means the library lent 40 books for the customers that means among this 90 40 books would be given for the customers so how many are still left over in the library 50 books would be left over 50 books will be left over so how many are right now in the stack after the third monday 50 books are in the stack that means what is the answer option d 50 books don't directly take the difference here because the process is happening from the first monday so out of 100 books First 80 books are given for the customer. So 20 books are left over. Now again for this 20, returned books will be added because the customers will give back the books. So this books will be again added for the library. So 50 books will be returned. That means 70 books it became. Now again from the 70 books, the library gives 60 books. So if they lent, that will be reduced. If they return, that will be added. Now again, library is going to lend. That means only 10 books will be left over. Now again on the third Monday, how many books returned? 80 books. That means 80 will be added. So 90 books should be there in the library. But they gave again 40 books. So 90 minus 40, 50 books will be left over in the stack. So what is the answer for this question? Option B, 50 books. We are going to see a question from time, speed and distance concept. It's a quite interesting question that appeared previously in NQT exam. So let's try to solve this question. A file of cadets consisting of 10 rows and 5 columns measures 420 meter in length along the direction of their marching. How much time in hours and minutes would it take to march for the stretch of 3 kilometer if the stride of each cadet is 80 centimeters and he takes 57 steps per minute. Most of us actually fail to understand this question what exactly they gave. So let me explain you what is the meaning of this question. A file of a cadet, it's nothing but a group of a armed force people you can see. See this is an example for you. This is called the file of a cadet. So here there are 10 rows and 5 columns. And they measure 420 meter in length. Now they are supposed to do a march. And the length of the march is 3 kilometer. We need to identify at what time they will finish this. Now observe this particular figure. When can I say they completed the march? So let us just think this is the starting line. Okay, And somewhere after 3 kilometers, there will be the ending line for them to finish the march. 
So when can we say they completed this particular match? When the first person reaches here, can I say they completed the match? Definitely no. The last person who is staying here, he should come until this point. Then only we can say the entire match is completed. That means that what is the total distance here? First, he needs to cross this. The length of the particular file, which is 420 meter. And then he should even cross this 3 kilometers and he should come here then only the match will be completed. That means in this particular question, what is the total distance they need to travel? Total, the file of them, which is 420 meter and then three kilometers also they should complete. Then only we can say the match is completed. So the total distance traveled, the total distance traveled will be equals to 420 meter plus three kilometer. Three kilometer, let me just convert in terms of meters everything. 420 meter plus 3 kilometer is 3000 meter, right? So total 3420 meters if they cross, then only we can say the match is completed. Now, we need to identify how much is the time they will take. For that, they gave us some hints here. If the stride of each cadet is 80 centimeter, stride is nothing but the uh, feet length that they take, or you can say it as a step, one step, one step they will took 80 centimeter like this, they will cover 57 steps per minute. So 57 steps per minute, that means one minute, how much length they will cover? One step, it is 80 centimeter. 80 centimeter it is, we taken here in terms of meter, let us just write it in terms of meter, which is 0 0.8 meter. One step length is 0 0.8 meter. Now they are going to take 57 steps per minute. 57 steps per minute they will take. That means what is the distance they will cover in a minute? Can I say the length or the distance they will cover in one minute will be equals to 0 0.8 into 57? Yes, one, one step length is 0 0.8 and 57 steps. So 0 0.8 into 57, which is nothing but 45.6 meters they will cover in one minute. One minute they will cover 45.6 meters. Right. Now they need to cover 3,420 meters. So 3,420 meters, how many minutes? That's it. You can just consider this is X minutes and do the cross multiplication. So what's the value of X? It will be 3420 divided by 45.6. You will be even having on-screen calculator to do this calculation. So what would be the answer? It will be 75 minutes they will take. Okay. 75 minutes. So now if I want to convert it in terms of hours, 75 minutes is nothing but 60 minutes plus 15 minutes. So 16 minutes is nothing but one hour. So one hour, 15 minutes they will take to complete the entire match. They will take one hour, 15 minutes. Option A. There is no necessary even to uh, find out the speed of them. Nothing is required for this question. You can easily solve it. First, you need to understand the question. So when can we say they completed the march when they covered this total distance, three kilometers plus 420 meters. One minute, they will take 57 steps. One step length is 80 centimeter. That means in one minute, they are going to cover 45.6 meters. So how much time they will take to cover this entire meter? So how much time they will take? 75 minutes. The answer is option A. Hope you understood the question. Now we'll be seeing a question from number systems concept, which is quite interesting question. A number is divided by 1001, which was equals to 7 into 11 into 13. And it is divided succession by 7, 11, 13 to obtain the reminders 4, 6 and 12 respectively. What would have been the reminder if the number was directly divided by 1001? So firstly, to solve this question, you should understand the concept of successive division. What is meaning of divide in succession? Succession meaning, see, for example, if I take the number 10, if I want to divide 10 with 2 and 3, what generally we do? 10 we will take, we will divide with 2. And then 10 we will take, we will divide with 3. This is the basic division. Now, what is the meaning of successive division is, first we will take 10 and we divide with the first number. 10, I will divide with 2. So it goes 5 times and it will give us the reminder as 0 and quotient is 5. 
Now, successive division means, now 10 we are not going to divide with 3. We will take the quotient that was obtained here, which is 5, and then we will divide 5 with 3. So, which is nothing but 1 time here, 3 and 2, like this. So, whatever the quotient that we are going to get, that we will be dividing with the next number, not the number itself. So, 10 first we will divide with 2. And then the quotient we get, that we will take for the next number. For example, if it is, if they say 10 is successively divided with 2, 3 and 4, for example. So, first 10 is divided with 2. Now, whatever the quotient we got, now we will divide it with 3. Now, again, whatever the quotient we get, now we will divide it with the next number. That is nothing but 4. With 4, we need to divide. So, again, it will be 0 here, which is 1, like this. Okay, so this is the meaning of successive division. Now, let's see how to solve this question. There is a number, that particular number, and we will take that particular number was divided successively by 7, 11, and 13. You should take exactly in the same order. First, it's 7. So, it was divided first with 7. We will get a quotient. We don't know what is that also. But the reminder is 4. They gave us the reminder is 4. Now, the quotient will be divided with 11, not the number. Now, we get again one more. And the reminder here is 6. When it was with 11, the reminder is 6. Now, the new quotient obtained will be divided by 13. And we get one more. And the reminder would be 12 here. Now, instead of doing this many times with 7, 11, and 13, what will be the reminder if the number is directly divided with 1001 is your question. Instead of doing with 11, uh, 7, 11, and 13, what will be the reminder if it was directly divided with 1001? We should identify what is this reminder. So, to solve in a conventional manner or the main procedure, it will automatically take around 1 or 1 1.5 minutes for this question. And we will not be able to identify the value of n. We will get it in the form of uh, the reminder. That means we are going to actually use the concept of the number is equals to divisor into quotient plus reminder. That concept we should use here. That means, for example, if I want to write for the first question, I can say number is equals to divisor into quotient. Means 7 into q plus 4. Divisor into quotient plus the reminder. So here I can say q will be equals to 11 q1 plus 6. Here I can say q1 will be equals to 13 q2 plus 12. Now, you need to keep on substituting these values and we will get number will be equals to 1001 some question plus the reminder. This is the value that we want. So, definitely I don't suggest you going with the main procedure for this question because that is lengthy and you will get confused also. So, let me teach you a small shortcut that you all will like. So, let's see the shortcut. So, instead of doing the entire procedure, what we will do, let us just write the number and the reminder number and the reminder that they mentioned in the question. So for 7, the reminder is 4. For 11, the reminder is 6. For 13, the reminder is 12. Now, if you want to identify the reminder, when the number, the particular number was divided with the product of all of these numbers, which is nothing but 7 into 11 into 13, you can easily apply one shortcut. And before going to the shortcut, just remember you can identify the reminder only for the product of these numbers. If they ask you for any other, we will not be able to identify the answer for that. You will be only able to identify for the product of these numbers. So the shortcut is pretty simple. Eliminate the last number. Always write in the form of number and the reminder. And there to exactly in the order. First 7, next 11 and then 13. Eliminate the last number, next cross first straight cross and then straight so it's like a zigzag manner first is cross then is straight and then is cross and then is straight if any other cross straight will keep on going so cross stands for multiplication straight stands for addition if it's cross you need to multiply the numbers if it's straight addition if it's cross multiplication straight addition like this now 12 into 11 first it's cross so into so 12 into 11 is how much 132 so here it goes with 132. Now straight manner. So plus 132 plus 6. 132 plus 6 is how much? 138. So remove this. 138. Now again cross into. So 138 into 7 we should do. 138 into 7 is how much? 966. You will be having on screen calculator also. You can easily do it. 966. 
now straight 966 plus 4 966 plus 4 is 970 so that's the last step so what is the answer 970 that's it option d such an easy uh, easy trick isn't it so all you need to do is eliminate the last digit so let me explain you one more time quickly so let us take the number 7 and 4 11 and 6 13 and 12 number and the reminder remove the last number cross straight cross and straight cross is for multiplication straight is for addition cross is for multiplication straight is for addition okay so now first multiply them 11 into 12 Which is one thirty-two. So instead of this, you can just place it as one thirty-two. One thirty-two plus six, one thirty-eight. Now instead of this, it's one thirty-eight. Last one thirty-eight into seven, which is nine sixty-six. So instead of this, nine sixty-six. Nine sixty-six plus four. So nine sixty-six plus four. Last step, which is nine seventy. So your remainder will be nine seventy. Option D. Hope you understood and like the trick. Now I would like to give you a small. Question and I would like to see your responses in the comment box. So here the number they gave you is eighty-eight, and this was eight and eleven, and the reminders produced are five and six. So what will be the answer if it was directly divided by eighty-eight instead of eight and eleven, and the reminders produced are five and six? So I'd like to see your responses in the comment section. now we are going to solve the question from the concept of mensurations mensuration is basically a concept which deals with the measurements and there are a lot of formulas that you should remember like volume of a cone volume of a cylinder volume of a spherical ball or you can say area of a triangle area of a rectangle like this there are a lot of formulas that you should know for so once go through all the formulas that will definitely help you in your mqt exam so let's see a question from the concept of mensurations here A hollow spherical ball is of thickness one centimeter and external radius five centimeter. Is melted and then form the solid so obtained without any loss of the material. Sixty one identical spherical balls are obtained. What is the diameter of the each ball? So before going to solve this question, firstly you need to understand what exactly is a hollow spherical ball. because a solid spherical ball is a different one and a hollow spherical ball is a different one so let me show you exactly what is the difference between them so this is a hollow spherical ball means in the middle part there is no metal only this thickness is the metal that means only this particular thickness is the metal and this is called as a solid spherical ball so this is called as a solid spherical ball that means entire inside every way the metal will be there but for the hollow spherical ball the middle part will be empty that means there will be no metal in the middle only this thickness will be having the metal now let's see this question now this particular hollow spherical ball whatever we had is melted and we obtained some solid material so first we needs to identify what is the material that we got so the volume of the material the volume of the solid material first we should identify so how do i get it so material is just this part the thickness is 1 cm here and the external radius is 5 cm they clearly gave us in the question 1 cm thickness and 5 cm now i just require the volume of the material that means this part i directly can't apply the formula for volume of the sphere here so to get the volume of the material we need to do volume of the entire sphere volume of total sphere total sphere here minus volume of hollow part then we will get what is the solid that is obtained hollow part so how do we get volume of the total sphere what is the radius of the entire spherical ball here 5 cm what is the volume formula 4 by 3 pi r cube that means 4 by 3 pi r is how much here 5 Pi cube will give us the total. Now from this, I needs to subtract this part. What will be this part? This entire is pi. This is one. That means this will be four centimeter. So minus four by three pi four cube. I needs to subtract. Don't directly take one centimeter. That is not a spherical shape to directly apply the formula of the value. You should definitely do the total minus the hollow part. So this is going to give us four by three pi. If I just take four by three pi common, what is five cube? One twenty five minus what is four cube? It's sixty four. 
So in total, 125 minus 64 will be 61. So 61 into 4 by 3 pi. So this is the material that is obtained for us. Now, by using this material, whatever the solid that we got, volume of the solid, volume of the solid material was equals to volume of 61 spherical balls. Because by the solid, whatever we got, they made 61 identical balls. So 61 into volume of each ball, volume of each spherical ball. Total 61 balls is formed. That's why 61 into volume of spherical balls. So what is the volume of the solid that we got? 61 into 4 by 3 pi. That should be equals to 61 into volume of the spherical ball. What is volume of the spherical ball? 4 by 3 pi r cube. We don't know what is the radius. We should identify that radius first. Then only we will get the diameter. So we don't know what is the spherical ball radius that was formed for. So we will just consider it as r. Now if I cancel this, entire thing will get cancelled and r cube will be equals to 1. If r cube is equals to 1, r value is equals to 1. That means the radius of the balls, the radius of the balls that are formed is 1 centimeter. The radius is 1 centimeter. So don't go with the option C. That's not your question. They are asking you the diameter of the balls. So radius is 1 centimeter of the ball which is formed. So what is the diameter? Diameter will be 2 centimeter. Because radius is uh, radius will be half of the diameter. So if you want to identify diameter, diameter will be equals to 2 into radius. So 2 into 1 is nothing but 2 centimeter. So what will be the answer? Option D. So first we need to identify what is the volume of the solid that was obtained for. So to get the volume, this is a hollow spherical ball. So we should do total minus the hollow part. So which is 4 by 3 pi. 5 cube minus 4 by 3 pi 4 cube. So we will get the volume of the solid. So that volume of the solid which is melted, there is no material loss. That's why that was directly equals to 61 times the volume of these balls because 61 balls are formed. So we will just substitute 61 into 4 by 3 pi will be equals to 61 times into volume of each ball will be equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube. So by that we will get the volume of uh, radius r is equals to 1. So once we get the radius, the diameter will be equals to 2r, which is 2 into 1, 2 centimeter. So answer is option D. Now we are going to solve a question from the concept of profit and loss. Most of the questions in profit and loss can be solved by understanding what is exactly mentioned in the question. So let's see how to solve this question. When the list price, which is nothing but the MRP, list price of an article is fixed at 30% above the cost price and while the selling the same, it was subjected to a discount of X percent. The profit percentage is 80 percent is of that when the list price is fixed at 25 percent is above the cost price and the discount is 16 percent is. What is the value of X? So try to understand exactly what is mentioned in the question. There are two cases. Case one, there is some cost price. We don't know what is the cost price. Now the list price was increased by 30% above the cost price. That means cost price plus 30% of the cost price should give us the list price. While selling this, they gave a discount of X percent. So discount will be always given on list price itself. So discount of X percent is reduced on the list price. So they will make some profit here. We don't know what is the profit. Let us just consider that is some P1. Now in the second case, second case, the same article, the same cost price, whatever the cost price is there. Now they increased it by 25% above the cost price. That means here list price will be equals to cost price plus 25% of the cost price. And discount of 16% is offered. 16% of list price is offered. Now, here they will make again one more profit. This particular profit, let us consider P2. Now, they clearly said the profit percentage in the first case is 80% of the profit in the second case. That means P1 will be equals to 80% of P2. Percentage of the profit that got in the first case was equals to 80% of the profit that got in the second case. Now, how to solve this kind of questions? If you observe, they did not give us any value like what is the cost price or what is the selling price or what is the list price. 
So one best way to solve this kind of questions is assumption method. Instead of considering a variable, you can assume your cost to price and try to consider always the cost to price as 100. There are many advantages of considering 100. One is easy for calculation and one more thing is percentage of profit will be directly equal to the profit value itself. So let us see how to solve. So first step, I'm going to consider my cost to price is equals to 100 rupees. At this moment, what should be the list price in this case? 100 plus 25 percentage of 100, 25 percentage of cost to price will be increased. So 100 plus 25 percentage of 100 means 125 rupees should be the list price here. Now, discount of 16 percent is offered. That means 16 percent will be given on 125 rupees. So what is 16% of 125 rupees? You can easily calculate it or you can use your on-screen calculator, which is 20 rupees. That means 20 rupees should be the reduction. So they could have sold the article for 125 is the price they sold and 20 rupees reduction they did. That means 125 minus 20. 105 rupees is the selling price of that particular article. So we got the cost to price is 100. And the selling price is 105. That means profit in this case will be 5 rupees. Or you can take it as 5 percentage also because profit is nothing but selling price minus cost to price divided by cost to price into 100. This 100 and this 100 will get cancelled. And again, it will give you 5 percentage itself. So directly in the question, they clearly mentioned this profit percentage. Still, we can directly take it as 5 rupees itself. So what should be the profit in this first case then? It should be 80 percentage of 5. What is 80 percentage of 5? 4. That means profit percentage in the first case should be 4. A profit will also be 4 itself. Now, they bought the article for 100 rupees. And the list price is 30 percent above the cost price. That means list price should be 130 rupees here. And they got a profit of 4 rupees. That means the article could have been sold at one at four rupees because selling price is nothing but cp plus profit how much is the cp here 100 and what is the profit four rupees so one at four rupees they could have sold now percentage of discount we should calculate which is this x value so what is percentage of discount percentage of discount will be equals to you can take it as mrp or list price minus Selling price divided by list price into 100. So what is the list price here? 130 minus 104 divided by 130 into 100, which is 26 divided by 130 into 100, which will give us 20 percentage. So what is the discount that is offered here? 20 percentage. So X value is equals to 20 percentage. So this is one method of solving the question. If you understand the terminologies exactly, then the way of solving this question don't seem like so lengthy for you. You can easily solve this. Or else, let me teach you a small shortcut. So here there are two cases and they are going to deal with percentage of discount, percentage of markup and profit or loss itself. So whenever a question is dealing about percentage of discount or markup or profit or loss percentage, you can easily apply this short trick. For example, if they gave you two things and they ask you to calculate one more, you can easily apply this particular shortcut here. Percentage of profit should be equals to percentage of markup minus percentage of discount minus percentage of markup into percentage of discount divided by 100. If they gave you markup and discount and ask you to calculate profit, you can just substitute here. It will directly give you the percentage of profit. If it is loss, you should consider it as minus. Minus loss will be equals to markup minus discount, percentage of markup into discount divided by 100. It is very easy to apply this short trick in all the problems of profit and loss, not only for this particular question. Whenever you are dealing with two terminologies of this and you should identify one more you can easily up substitute by using this particular formula here so let me show you how exactly we can apply in this question so here there are two cases so let us take case one and case two there are two cases so we need to apply two times in case two here, they increase the article by 25% above the cost price. That means percentage of markup is equals to 25%. And then percentage of discount offered is equals to 
Now, first we will calculate what is the profit that is occurred in this case. So, percentage of profit will be equals to markup minus discount minus markup into discount divided by 100 will directly give us the percentage of profit, which is 9 minus 25 into 16 is 400 by 100 is 4, which is 5 percentage. So, profit percentage in this case, in second case is 5 percentage. So, what will be profit percentage in the first case? Profit percentage will be equals to 80 percentage of 5, which is 4. Because they clearly mentioned in the question, it is 80 percentage, which is 4. And what is the percentage of markup? Markup percentage in the first case is 30 percent. They marked it 30 percent more. And percentage of discount is equals to X percent. So let us substitute profit percentage should be equals to percentage of markup minus discount minus markup into discount divided by 100. Let us just tend 30 this side. So 4 minus 30 minus 26 should be equals to let us take LCM of 10 minus 10x minus 3x divided by 10. That implies minus 260 will be equals to minus 13x. The minus minus will get cancelled 13 ones and 20. So X value is how much 20 percent is directly we get the answer. So what is the answer option C? This kind of trick can be applied in all the concepts of profit and loss. When the two terminologies of this three is mentioned and you should identify one more. Hope you people understood. We are going to solve a question from the concept of ratios and proportions. So let's see how to solve. What is the sum which when divided among A, B, C and D in the portion of 2 is to 3 is to 5 is to 8 provides 8420 less to D than what is provided to him when the portion is 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 5 is to 1 by 8. So there is a sum. Let us consider the sum is equals to X. First it was divided in this portion. And then the portion was divided as A, B, C and D. It was 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 5 is to 1 by 8. Now, the particular question speaks about the person D. So let us consider how much is the amount received by D in both the portions. So first, if we identify here, the amount received by D will be equals to number of parts of this person, which is exactly the below one, 8 divided by total parts. Total parts means 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 in plus 8 into total amount will give us the amount received by D here, which is 8 divided by 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 is 18 into X, which is 4 by 9 X. So in this portion, if the amount was divided like this, D will receive 4 by 9 into X rupees. So now let us calculate how much he will receive in this case. Firstly, this is in terms of fractions. So we need to convert it in terms of normal ratio like this. So how do we do? We will multiply with LCM of the denominators. What are LCM of the denominators here? 2, 3, 5 and 8. LCM will be 120. Remember a point, ratio will not change when you multiply with the same number and when you divide with the same number for all the parts. Now multiply 120 for all the parts. That means 1 by 2 into 120 is to 1 by 3 into 120 is to 1 by 5 into 120 is to 1 by 8 into 120. So what it will give us? 60 is to 40 is to 24 5 and 120 24 is to here 15. That means 1 by 2 is to 1 by 3 is to 1 by 5 is to 1 by 8 can also be known as 60 is to 40 is to 24 is to 15. Now what is the share of D here? D share will be equals to number of parts of D which is 15 here last one. 15 divided by total. Total we need to add all of them. 60 plus 40 into 24 plus 15 into amount. Amount is X here itself. So X, this will be equals to 15 divided by 100 plus 139 X. That means here D will receive 15 divided by 139 X rupees. Now, it's clearly mentioned in the question. If you do like this, you if you do in this particular manner, you will get 8,420 rupees more than this. 
nothing but if you do in this division you get 8420 rupees less than this that means the difference between them should be equals to 8420 difference means 4x if i take this part which is 4x by 9 minus this part which is 15x divided by 139 should be equals to 8420 so you will be having on screen calculator so don't worry about the calculation you can use your on screen calculator and you can easily do it so let us uh, take the lcm here which would be nothing but 9 into 139 now 139 into 4 i should multiply so 139 into 4 is 556 x minus 15 into 9 is 135 x that should be equals to 8420 that implies 556 minus 135, which is 421 x, will be equals to 8420 into this will come this side, which is 9 into 139. So 421 and this one will exactly get 20 times cancelled. So x will be equals to 20 into 9, which is 180 into 139, 25,000 20 rupees. That means what is the total value? X will be equals to 25,000 20 rupees. Option A. so this kind of question you should first convert the fraction in terms of normal number by multiplying with lcm and then the difference between the shares will give us the answer so you can easily do this calculation by using the on screen calculator which is available for you so what is the answer option a the question from the concept of time and work 96 men were engaged for a project of constructing railway track of length 18 kilometers in 4 weeks after one week it was observed that work of 4 kilometer was completed how many additional men should be engaged for timely completion of the project this kind of questions can be easily solved by using something called as a chain rule or work equivalence so we are going to use a small formula here that is n1 d1 h1 divided by w1 is equals to n2 d2 h2 divided by w2 so this is a general formula where n is number of men or number of women or number of children whatever is mentioned in the question and d is number of days number of days and h is number of hours a day sometimes they will even mention number of hours a day also number of hours a day and w is the work done by them w is the work done so there is a general formula that we can use if sometimes they did not mention you the hours you can just neglect this hours and you can consider remaining terminologies okay so now let's see how to solve first we need to understand what is the work done and work left so total after one week 4 kilometers is completed that means work done in the first case so w1 is equals to 4 kilometer and how many people started the work 96 men that means n1 is equals to 96 and how many weeks they worked they worked for one week so this was directly in terms of weeks this is also in terms of weeks and the total work is also in terms of weeks so instead of d1 w w a week we can take directly in terms of week we can take so i can say d1 is equals to 7 days or i can directly take it as one week also because both of them are in terms of weeks itself now what about the work left total work is 18 kilometers that means work left w2 is nothing but 18 minus 4 which is 14 kilometer is still supposed to be done and how many days they are going to take or how many weeks they are going to complete this project they total needs to do it in 4 weeks now how many weeks are still left over 3 weeks are still left over so directly we can take it as 3 weeks now what is the number of men that is in this case it will be 96 plus some x we don't know how many extra it is 96 plus x so let's just substitute here n1 is 96 into number of weeks is one week divided by work done is 4 this should be equals to 96 plus x into number of weeks here is 3 directly you can take this days in terms of weeks itself instead of again multiplying both the cases with 7 so divided by what is the work left here 14 so let us just cancel so 3 ones and 3 32 here ones and eights here so let us do cross multiplication by doing cross multiplication we will get 96 plus x will be equals to 
14 into 8, which is 1 to 12. So x will be equals to 1 to 12 minus 9 to 6, which is 16. So x value is equals to 16. That means how many additional men are required? 16 additional men are required. Answer for this question is option B. So you can directly apply all the models of this questions by using this particular formula. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you like the video, do not forget to press the like button and also subscribe our channel for more videos like this. Thank you.